Morning everybody. As you can tell, still very wet on the farm. We it's the start of September, well into spring. We're struggling to string together three days of good weather to be honest. Keeps raining, keeps being cold, it's not ideal. So we've got some very hungry sheep on our hands. Dad's going out there at the moment to check them. As you can imagine, the farm's very wet. With all the rain we've been getting, um, a lot of the area has been like, a lot of the paddocks have been flowing, like water running off them, that's how wet it is. We don't need any more rain, that's for sure. So we're gonna grab a heap of hay, start feeding now. Dad's gone out there to check all the, um, the lick bins with all the grain in them. And we'll have to fill those up as well. Because <clears throat> we think, yeah, they're just not getting enough feed at the moment. And because they're in lamb, they just need, you know, almost double the amount because they're producing, well, they're eating for two, basically. So he's going out there to check them. I'm gonna start feeding out hay. I've got a young helper with me today. So he's excited to go. Um, yeah, so we'll try and get these sheep fed. I think that's what we'll spend the majority of the day doing. We'll swing past the crops as we're out there. Um, they're coming along all right. Obviously a lot of water on them still but they're up, so we can't complain too much. So we'll see you out there. Suffolk that are in lamb to the white Suffolk and then two for the big duny mob as you can see we are getting low on hay we you got still the net wrapped ones from uh, two years ago but we've used all of our hay that we made last year so <coughs> settle down dog anyway um <laughs> yeah so hopefully we'll get a bit more growth and grass and stuff we won't be so much hay but uh yeah. cracker sees the mob so Cragus can see the herd of cows moving in the distance. Crackers! Settle down, dog! So, we'll get out there and feed those sheep.
main mob are Dooney ewes, so these ones in lamb to Dooney. As you can see, they're all still heavily pregnant. <clears throat> I don't think any have given lamb yet. They'll be pretty close. Um, yeah, they'll feed out the half of this bale. I lost freaking half of it, it fell apart up there, so I'll have to spread this bit out and then go get the other half and feed the other bale out on the back.
lot. So we've come back from feeding out hay. Crackers. Come back from feeding out hay and um, I've just put the, for, uh, the pallet forks on the John Deere. Got a pallet as well so we can feed out some grain. I don't know how well you guys could see out there, but it was bloody wet. <clears throat> yeah, just so much water on the ground, you know, once it's with our sort of heavy clay soil. Once it's wet, it's wet, and yeah, doesn't really do much other than run off, so it's just pulling in all the low spots. Oh, I saw one crop of oats out there. It looks like it's starting to struggle a bit with the amount of uh, wetness that's around. Uh, and just sort of starting to be a lot more area. It's yellow, and some of the tips on the, the leaf are starting to uh, die. I guess it's from just too much water. So this is sort of turning into a tale of last year, how we had so much rain and the crops didn't grow. They're at the, they've grown more than what they did last year, but we really need a couple of weeks of dry weather and some sunshine. So yeah, it sounds like that's on his way back. So we will, um, yeah, go feed out some grain. So I'll set up this auger. Due for a new belt on the old auger there, it was it's looking pretty ordinary. Just flapping around a bit loose and a bit worn out. Well, we also got to deal with the rotten grain because moisture's been getting in there, so it makes it a little bit harder to fill up because the auger blocks up down the bottom. So I'll give Dad a hand and we'll we'll uh, try and fill this bag up. So we're just going, well, Dad's heading out there now with that first bag of grain for the main Dooney mob. Um, I'm going to show you what we're dealing with with the rotten grain. So this silo's got holes in it somewhere. There's like just random drilled holes for some reason. We have filled them with silastic, but I think the silastic's come out. Anyway, moisture's getting in the grain and it's rotting it. So this is what we're dealing with here is a big clump of rotten grain. Just 
turns into rubbish like this. Obviously, it's no good to feed. They won't eat it. But um, it mixes in with the half okay stuff. So this is the barley that we sowed, well, I sowed in that paddock, and that's why we had such... Um, we were worried that it wasn't going to grow because of a lot of it was like that. But anyway, basically the lick feeders aren't working properly because they keep getting blocked with clumps of rotten grain and the whole idea is it's meant to slide out smoothly so the sheep can lick it up to eat it. But that's why we keep having to adjust them wider and wider to allow this crap to go through. So it's not ideal, but you know, what can we do really? So we'll head out, fill up this first lick feeder and then we'll come back in another bag and then fill up the next one. Rightio, I'm just passing the, um, the, so this is the last paddock that we sowed, which is the second paddock of oats up near the cypress trees. Cows all chilling in the shade there. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's sort of a little bit, there's difference in heights. Like all here is really short because of being really wet. And then it's sort of the same throughout the paddock. It looks pretty good looking down that way and right in front of us. You can see there's a lot of weeds coming up through it. Um, I'm not sure if that's dock in front of us or not, but um, yeah, we've got to come out and spray still. It's just too wet to get out there at the moment. But I, hope, I don't know if we'll even get a chance to spray, to be honest, but uh, we'll see what happens. You never know, we might dry up and we'll be able to get out there and actually do it, but all the paddocks are, need to be sprayed still. The barley looks a lot shorter than this, and I don't know what that back paddock's like. If I go out close enough, I'll show you, but I don't think I'm really heading that way. So, um, yeah, we'll continue on with feeding, and hopefully if we get some dry weather. I keep saying it almost every time I'm out here talking about the crops. Dry weather, that's all we want, just a little bit of dry weather. So, all right, we'll go out and feed those sheep. One down, one to go, I think. Three hungry customers. Rest of the mobs over the other side of the dam. These three I feel are pets, so they've come over. Right, yeah, I just got that here with me. He's just gonna give a quick update on what's happening with the sheep at the moment and we're, uh, yeah, sort of where they're at. So I'll give his over to him. Yeah, good day, viewers. We're out here feeding the sheep today, giving them some more grain. We can gave them some hay. These are the ones that are in lamb to the doonies. Uh, they're fairly heavy in lamb at the minute. I'd be expecting them to start lambing probably towards the end of this month. There might even be a couple uh, lamb a little bit beforehand, but yeah, they're going not too bad. We've had to give them some mineral blocks to supplement some um, sort of the lack of real good green feed. I would have liked to have had them in on the oats that we planted, but it's been far too wet for them to be bogging around on that. Uh, so. We're trying to make them do with the between the couple of paddocks that we've got. So they're going all right. I prefer to have them in a little bit better condition, but um, it's just the way the year's gone. It's a bit too wet and there hasn't been a lot of growth, but it's starting to kick off now a bit. The few that are in lands of the white suffix next door, uh, they're going all right. They're, because there's not that many of them, the, the paddock they're in, the grass is sort of getting away from them a bit now, so there's a bit of clover and whatnot in it, so they're going along not too bad, but we'll give them a, uh, a bit of grain, we'll feed them next, and the wieners out the back here, well they're sort of doing okay, um, but we'll 
feed them some grain as well. We've given every, every mob some mineral blocks to help them with their calcium intake and whatnot. So hopefully the weather will fine up and dry up a bit. They'll uh, they'll do better in the dry than what they are puddling around in the mud. So, anyway, that's what's happening at the minute at this stage. Rightio, here we have an example of too much rain. So we're down the corner of this paddock, generally has cattle in it. We're just sort of near the hay and there's the sheds up there. Main laneway, you guys see me come for this slosh all the time. <clears throat> so water's coming down from there because that's a bit of a hill. Well, not much of a hill, but it's just slopes down here. Pulls it here. And as you can see, I dug this little trench, uh, whenever it was last year maybe. You can see the water flowing through out into the slosh area. There's a pipe there going through there. Shoots under the track, heads over there, there's another little pipe that goes under another track in that paddock and then you can't really tell, but there's a big drain that follows all the way around to the Yappy Dam over there, fills that up. It's obviously full at the moment. So when that's full, it does overflow back out through the gum tree plantation and across into the next farm and then there's more drains that go to wherever they go. On Google Earth, it actually shows it as a waterway, which is odd because all it is is just drains that have been put in over the years. But yeah, that's how much water there is on the farm at the moment. It's flowing off of the paddocks. So there you go. So I was just thinking about it when I was driving the quad bike back here to the silo about all, well, issues at the moment on the farm. They're all stemming from the rain. So I think there's about three or four. Train you the rotten grain. Wouldn't be such an issue if we weren't getting so much rain and it was rotting, it'd still probably be rotten because of just moisture anyway. <clears throat> but that's one problem. Another problem is with the cold, wet weather, Dad talking about the condition of the sheep, they're not in ideal condition for what he would want. Obviously when it's really cold weather and wet, um, sheep, the same as a human, you use a lot of energy to stay warm, thus you want to be, you need more um, food or whatever to keep you going. So <clears throat> that's another issue because the sheep are, <laughs> You know, cold and wet obviously it's the same with the cows you need to feed them more so another issue there so that's why we need to keep their grain topped up and keep feeding them hay constantly and then the other issue is not being able to get into the paddocks to spray because it's so wet obviously the ground will just turn to slosh also with the sheep not being able to be let out onto the paddocks as well because of how wet it is they'll just make a mess they were out there the other week um, but that brought them in before it rained um, he let them out there just after they were crushed, so about three weeks ago. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of all our problems that are all to do with too much water, too much rain. Um, that's one of those things you uh, you like hear people say all the time about, like farmers they complain not not enough rain, too much rain, too dry, all that sort of stuff. But like it's one of those things that you always get too much of what you actually need. <laughs> so, yeah, that's our problems with rain and water at the moment. We are in spring, so hopefully, hopefully start to get some nicer days. But um, it's not really happening. Anyway, not much we can do about it. Weather is the weather and we can't change it. So, Dad's almost here. We'll fill up another bag. He did say that we, had, we were only gonna put in half a bag in the Wiener Lambs lick feeder, because it's still got some in there. And then I think we were going to put half a bag with the um, the ewes that are in Lamb to the White Suffolk. So I lied when I said there was one more to go. There's actually two more, but shouldn't take too long to do.
so we finished up feeding the sheep, filling up the leg feeders, so all three of them got filled. Um, so that should keep them going for a little while, hopefully. Um, while I was out there, I moved some uh, mineral blocks for the sheep, just over to what that the main mob that was in their paddock. They're sharing two paddocks at the moment, but um, just put them over to near where they were, just so they're a bit closer for them. That'll help them go along and keep them nice and healthy, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, so that was pretty much all that's happened today, because yeah, as I've explained, as you guys have saying, very wet still. It's the uh, story of the farm at the moment is so much water. Anyway, um, yeah, in a bit of interesting, well, in a bit more interesting news, for those who guessed what was coming to the farm, yeah, it was my toolbox. I think someone guessed, I can't remember your name, mate, but well done. Someone, there were some interesting guesses. Uh, I think someone guessed the St Kilda Football Club, <laughs> which was a good one. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so this is my work toolbox from my old work uh, now. So I quit, yeah, quit my job basically and um, no longer um, being a diesel mechanic as a full-time job. I've left it behind, just a bit hard on my shoulder. Um, as these guys probably know, I've had a couple of Ricos on it. So that sort of work was just a bit strenuous for it, um, doing it every day at least. So I've actually started a new job in agriculture. So I've gone into farming on a big farm a uh, little bit away from here. Um, yeah, so that, that's mainly cropping. So <clears throat> yeah, I've been out there for a uh, few weeks now. So it's been pretty enjoyable so far. A lot better than my old job, I think. I'm having a much better time. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully it won't affect too much uh, like um, the videos I'm doing. Um, might have to do a little bit of weekend work every now and then, which sort of might play havoc with what we're doing out here. But um, that's fine, I'll try and you know, keep the videos as regular as I can and um, hopefully it'll be good and hopefully I can uh, learn a few new things that maybe I can bring back here to um, modernise the farm a little bit, uh, see what Dad thinks about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, might do a um, video about this toolbox, uh, just like quickly, this is a Faber toolbox, Faber's a um, company up in New South, can't remember the town they're from, it's up in New South Wales. Um, they mainly make utes, uh, utes, uh, toolboxes for utes. So this is built to go on a ute. It's got the forklift slots down here. Um, so you can lift it up and put it on the ute. These things are bulletproof. Like dad had one here, the smaller version. This is a Hercules five. He had a Hercules four on the back of his ute for years. Um, these are all, there's no roller bearings and anything. It's just a, a metal slide. Yeah, literally just slides on the bottom there and there's some built up area in the framework of these drawers. Um, and yeah, dad had it on the back of his ute for years, his one. Rain and dirt getting thrown around everywhere and it was in really good condition to, um, still. And when he stopped sort of doing all the mechanic work at his work, he decided to sell his. Um, it was in similar condition in regards to stickers, covered in stickers, but it was a lot more faded and whatever and covered in crap. I think he ended up getting a couple of grand for it still, um, which is like really good. I think it was like 500 bucks less than what it is new. But um, yeah, they're like really well known in Australia or well on the Eastern side of Australia at least. I'm not sure about on the other side, but like, yeah, they're really well known as being really good toolboxes and like strong as, strong as an ox. And then yeah, the bottom part is a roll cab that um, dad actually built for me. Um, I, des I measured, like designed it basically and he put it all together so he's done a pretty good job. I designed it a little bit too tall as you can see. Um, I can't see into the top of this, I'm about six feet and what's that, that'd be like six, four, six, one or two <laughs> and I can't, can't see in that. I know what's up there, I don't use much of it but can't see into it. So I should have uh, made the roll cut a little bit shorter but you know, 2020 hindsight. So yeah, I might do a um, bit of a tour, I guess, of what's in there in another video and show you guys sort of what I keep in there, being a full-time diesel mechanic, working on trucks and trailers and all that sort of stuff. Just for those people who are interested. But we'll leave it at that for now. And yeah, we'll wrap the video up.
So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Just a bit of an update on what's been happening with the sheep at least and um, on the farm. And yeah, a bit of personal update from myself starting the new job, which is good. So I will catch you in the next one. Eric.